Welcome, everybody, to Integrate Yourself podcast. Uh, we're your host, Allison Pillow and Maya Gottlieb. Thank you so much for, for watching and listening. Uh, hey, Maya, how's it going? Good, good. Welcome to 2018, everyone. We all made it from last year, which is, you know, a good year. And, and this year is going to turn out even better. There's some new things on the horizon, which Allison and I have just been ta- kind of talking about. Yeah, so we are, are going to be taking on an affiliate or two this year and so that we can actually cover our production costs for the podcast. We appreciate get you guys' support so much. And if you want to support us a little bit more and you're going to you know, be going to use Thrive Market, which is one of our one of, is going to be one of our affiliate links, if you're going to purchase something there anyway, then you can go ahead and use our link to purchase what you're purchasing. And then a little bit of money comes back to us us from that and it helps support the podcast and you don't even have to spend an extra penny yourself and you're still supporting our podcast so we're gonna give you guys more info on that as we go along um we'll be adding that link uh in this show and in the next one as well so Um, you know the reason why we have kind of put that kind of thing off for a while Maya, you know, I, I, I think Maya agrees with me on this one. We wanted to try to just see how it went just for, you know, to do it for a year because we've been having so much fun with it. And we didn't really know how how this thing was going to take off or, or what kind of response we we're going to get from people. We've actually gotten a lot of positive response and we're putting a lot more time in it than we actually originally planned on it. Even though we're still having lots of fun, this is actually a really great, I know personally for me, a great creative outlet for myself. And I, I think Maya feels the same. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just been so much fun and so much great. It just is a great way to get this information out to you guys. It's fun to be able to do. So that's why we do it, but it does take a lot of time and energy. So we're going to, we're going to try to work on that this year. And they're for affiliates that we really actually support ourselves and would use ourselves. We're not going to, we're not going to put anything out there or try to make you guys go towards buying anything that we would not buy ourselves or, or we don't believe in products we don't believe in. So definitely our integrity is going to stay the same. We just wanted to let you guys know that we're going to work on really supporting the production costs a little bit more this year. And that's what we're doing. And it's exciting stuff. So today, as a matter of fact, is a topic show. Maya, you want to tell everybody a little bit about we're gonna, what we're going to be talking about today? Today we're talking about dairy, and I know it gets a little hairy <laughs> when we start thinking about um, dairy because people have issues with lactose intolerance or they have issues with having um, digestibility of, uh, of any kind of um, dairy in terms of when they um, like bloating, gas, symptoms that kind of come from uh, lactose intolerance doesn't necessarily mean you're lactose intolerant. It just means that some part of you is not able to digest the dairy and the importance of dairy. And the dairy has the, the calcium that we need for our bones and to help keep our body strong and not pulling the calcium um, away from our source. So this is a, a, a topic that we've had people call about and ask about um, because they don't know what to do when they do try to incorporate dairy back into their diet if they haven't been dr- drinking it or um, how much they should be uh, getting it per day. So we thought we'd just start talking about dairy today. Yeah. And, you know, it is a scary topic for some people. Um, and it seems like as health, as the health trends go, like this seems to be a big health trend, Maya, like as far as people cutting out the dairy in their diet. And I've seen that more and more with uh, clients that come to me. They're like, yeah, I cut out dairy. I'm like, why did you cut out dairy? And they're like, well, I just thought I was supposed to cut it out. Aren't, isn't that the healthy thing to do? So um, there's a lot of myths and misunderstanding around it as well. And the one thing I will start with people is I'll ask them, you know, are you, are you willing to, is this something you really want to do is bring dairy back into your diet? Um, because, um, I don't think that, 
many people understand the benefits. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of calcium in dairy and it's a good calcium to phosphorus, phosphorus ratio, but also it's just got, it's so nutrient dense. It's got all three macronutrients in it, the pro, your protein, your fat, and your carbohydrate, which rare, there's not many foods that have that all in one. As well as, you know, it's got uh, some thyroid hormone in it uh, and progesterone, qualities of progesterone in it. And I've been doing a lot of milk actually this past winter, um, and it's really been helping with my progesterone levels. Um, and I haven't had to do like any thyroid supplementation as of yet. So um, it's been really helpful in that. And I don't really think that a lot of people realize uh, how milk can help them that way. Um, it's also good for muscle building and it's good for, um, not, uh, I guess dec- decreasing your, your rate of aging. So we can talk mm. about that as well. Yeah. So we'll just jump right in. Like, um, mostly what we're looking at is why people need calcium. So as everyone understands, if your calcium intake isn't, um, high enough, then your body will register and say, Hey, we are low in calcium. We need to pull it from something. So that, then it starts pulling it from the bones. And that signal usually means the phosphate rate is really high versus your calcium. And so the parathyroid jumps in, it are actually creates uh, the serotonin and and then you end up having the increase of um, the um, uh, osteoporosis, and you create um, a, a need for the body to keep pulling from its sources versus uh, coming through and 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 balancing itself through your diet. A lot of the science has now been showing that when they look at dairy, they're they're not seeing that it also has. A, the uh, lactase and lactase is really um, in an en- gut enzyme that gets destroyed when there's too much cortisol. And cortisol is when the high stress hormones become, or the stress hormones become too high because you're um, going into a fatty acid mechanism versus staying in a um, oxidative mechanism, which we talked about in our previous shows. And that means that you're basically not producing enough CO2. The body is starting to need to produce lactic acid. And then the cascade effect is to create more stress hormones. And so when people have lactose intolerance, they don't have the enzyme anymore because the cortisol has depleted it and taken it from the gut. And um, so one of the ways we like to help people fix the gut is to slowly incorporate cheeses, um, things that have some dare, have have um, calcium in them, but are not as high in the lactose. And um, that means that way you can slowly digest it um, and start to incorporate it back in so the body gets used to it. You can also do low-fat cottage cheeses. Um, you can do um, things like... Um, I mean, definitely the the gelatin is something I would also use. You can use, um, you know, um, uh, the um, the I think it's the green can. It's a little less uh, dense on the body. I, I also wanted to do, to bring up the weight loss aspect of milk because it is good for losing weight as well because it increases your metabolism. I, I kind of would say that you know two paradigms are happening. If you're healing your gut, you're not necessarily needing to worry about losing weight because you're not going to lose weight until your gut's healing. Right. Because that means your absor- malabsorption is happening when your gut is not work functioning right. And you can always check that with your temperature and pulse to see what your metabolic rate is. Um, and then once you start to be able to um, digest sugars again, which is basically when – when the fatty acid uh, kind of happens more, like you know, as we talked about fat burning, the issue is that the body is training itself to be a fat burner, end quote. But it's not necessarily the best uh, um, ideas because what's happening is it's teaching the body not to take in sugar. So you're creating the diabetic syndromes or the Alzheimer's or the body saying, you know, sugar is increasing my insulin and causes hypoglycemia. That causes the body to stress, have more stress. So then once the body has the fat, the saturated fats are even better 
because it doesn't oxidize as fast as as the poly, uh, polyunsaturated fats. Right. So if you're trying to, you know, get your body to take in dairy, um, then it's a matter of allowing yourself to have some fat so that the body can utilize it and not fight with sugar so much. And then when the body can take in the sugar regularly, so that's the lactase, um, fructose, sucrose stuff, then you can then say, okay, let's take uh, the the fat content down a little to maybe lose some weight and use milk as a, um, a, a as a source of uh, of a better protein. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I, I think you're totally right. You have to get your digestion back on track before you're even able to get into the healthy metabolic state and actually mm-hmm. lose weight because your body is not going to do that until, um, until it feels like it's in a state of balance, right? Absolutely. If it doesn't, if, if people keep going into the large, low, low carb and, um, or high fat, high, high fats, or they do high protein and they don't balance it out, they're creating a, a system that is constantly fighting itself because it's not supposed to, you know, all these systems are supposed to work together based on what your body's naturally supposed to do. So if your stress levels are too high, you're conditioning your body to, you know, contain that stress. That means the body has to downregulate something else to deal with that stress. And so if foods are not being digested, your calcium and phosphor ratios are out of whack, so higher phosphate to calcium, then you're actually creating that stress hormone parathyroid um, increase. So then nothing's really working because you're kind of creating a, um, a, a, a high adrenaline cortisol uh, inflammation and the body is not going to take in that digestion that take in that nutrients from that food you're di- yeah you're just not able to absorb it basically yeah right and then you'll see a lot of people having like a glycemic I- issues right when they do take in um like a sugar or you know a fructose or so they get really paranoid like you know how we talked about orange juice you know people become spastic when they think about like having yeah. juice is going to cause their insulin they're going to get fat and that's because the body has trained the fat to kind of hold on and say, wait, we got we got uh, starvation going on. We haven't had this in a while. We've been working on ketones right. to only work in our body. And then the glycogen storages have gone down, increased the fatty acid. And then you have a diet full of PUFAs, which oxidize too fast because they, got, um, uh, they have um, high permeability. And so then you increase the serotonin. And it's, that's the cascade part, right? You're right. going to get in less amino acids for what you you want because it's you know when we start to when we or our body starts to know that we're not getting enough calcium in our diet and needs to do something to protect itself right. it's going to break down your tissues it's going to break down your bones and you know directly it's going to take those amino acids and you know increase this insulin and you know the secretion decreases the blood sugar so all this kind of re- revamps the whole cycle back again right yeah, and, and that's and, why gut is an issue. Like your gut just yeah. can't take all that in and when you're too stressed. Exactly. And actually getting the calcium in the right places in the body will create less, will help that stress, um, will bring it down a little bit and, and start the absorption process and the digestion process. And um, so let's talk about like, I guess that that's more of like a lead into like, okay, so why – do we want to invite dairy back into our life again if we've taken it out for a long time? Why wouldn't we just eliminate it forever, you know? Because there's not – I mean, you got to think about where you're going to get calcium from. So, like, grains and beans and right. things like that all have high phosphorase. And then you have um, meat, which is high tryptophan, um, and you don't uh, – and so you look at eggs and milk or you look at – Things that, um, you know, eggshells, you know, are one of the things I like to recommend because even a quarter teaspoon um, can give you, I think, a, I think if it's three times a day, quarter, it was a thousand milligrams or something like that. And you, um, our body has to have it. Like it's, 
it's needed in our development. Like there's just no way you can, you know, can't have, I mean, and, and there's the debate on whether or not we should be drinking cow's milk and whether it's digestible, but then you're kind of coming into the fact of who told who what's working. Like, I don't know the ancestral pathways, but our life has been using cow dairy milk for many, many centuries. Um, many other cultures use it. Um, because they knew the perfect food it had, uh, was from milk itself. Yeah. And, um, so if you look at, uh, cow's milk, the determining factor is, are you getting a cow that's got grass fed versus grain fed? Now, if that's grain fed, then you've got a chance of having more phosphorus in the, in, in the cow itself, creating less calcium in the body for them and us. And so then you look at a grass fed, which is literally less PUFAs and kind of helps the body create more calcium for us. So, um, that's one of the factors of what kind of dairy you're getting. Um, a lot of new dairies now have a carrageenan or fortified vitamin A and D um, because they add these things to help increase our vitamin supplementation. But if you look at just a grass-fed milk, you really have a perfect food. It has yeah. an incredible amount of, what was it like, um, 33 grams of protein or something in a liter. Is that right? Yeah, it's a lot. And I I have to uh, give a shout out to Organic Valley, who actually has a grass milk that I buy on a regular basis. And I think you can get it pretty much any at any natural food store. But um, they actually advertise it as grass milk. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but um, it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And that's the only milk company that I've actually seen advertise their milk as being grass fed milk (laughs) or they just, they, they're saying they just don't use any grains at all. Exactly. They, and Uh, they have other milk they sell that has, I guess is not grass milk, but this particular, this particular, um, brand or one that they sell is grass milk. So maybe they just have certain cows that are just eating grass. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember listening to Ray Pete talking about it in on his K Mud uh, interview, and they were saying, you know, the lowest amount of PUFA is in leaves. So, ca- you know, cows oh, yeah. eat lots of leaves. Yeah, and um, that makes and sense. and it's it's crazy that, you know, what what we know about phosphates are they they produce a lot of bulk. So they, when they add them into um, meat or they add them like lunch meats and stuff to make the water density more, um, you know, that, that the, the, the issue of it is, is it, it actually decreases the ability for you to get the calcium, you know, right. so it's like an inhibitor. We talked about that with a nuts and seeds episode because they have that naturally, they have phos- yeah. phosphate. Yeah. In that naturally to, uh, as an inhibitor for digesting that right right and and there was a quote i found that was kind of cool it says some amino acids directly in stimulate insulin secretion decreasing blood sugar and leading to the uh, secretion of cortisol and reaction to the depression of blood glucose the present the present the presence of lactose in milk and of fat to slow absorption of the amino acids helps to minimize the secretion of cortisol the main protein of milk casein seems to have some direct anti-stress effects so like one of the things that we you know if you can't take uh, in milk some people can do better on like a milk powder so you can try that instead to kind of supplement until you can heal your gut enough that you can take in a little bit of milk more and um like I, we mentioned before um you uh, can then cre- you know add the eggshells um, use the digestive aids, um, start with cheeses, um, definitely, um, look into like Parmesan, Raggiano, and then, um, you know, like I said, the low fat cheeses in just small doses to kind of build back your calcium stores, you know? Yeah. Yeah, And, uh, and, uh, and like you brought up, the gelatin is another form, you know, if you don't do well in the gelatin, you can always make your own bone broth for that reason too. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey everybody, this episode is brought to you by Thrive Market. Thrive Market offers the best-selling natural and organic 
products at wholesale prices because they cut out the middleman. Through a membership of only $60 a year, uh, you can become a member as well as for every paid membership, Thrive donates one membership to a low-income American family, which is so amazing. And that's one of the reasons I have been a member myself of Thrive Market for two years now. Uh, think Costco meets Whole Foods online. So if you don't want to spend the Whole Foods prices, but you want to kind of treat it like a Costco membership, definitely consider Thrive Market. Uh, what I love about Thrive Market is we've been able to get uh, things like coconut oil at about 25 to 50% off uh, below retail prices. And that's been really amazing. Co coconut oil, if you guys haven't noticed, is kind of expensive. So um, it's been great to be able to get a high quality organic product like coconut oil uh, from Thrive Market where, uh, where we're not spending ev all of our money buying it. So definitely check it out. If you want to check it out, go to the affiliate link at pureenergypdx.com and click on the banner, the Thrive Market banner on my website, and it'll take you straight to Thrive Market where you can take advantage of 25% off your first order plus free shipping. And you have a 30-day free uh, trial, so you're not obligated to anything. So thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate you so much. And back to the show. You know, tons of great uh, resources uh, that you can utilize if you don't do well on dairy right now. Yeah, like and like you said, cheese is a good place to start, and then you've got also goat's milk and uh, sheep's milk, and also are going to be you you may be able to metabolize that uh, or handle it differently than like a cow's milk, but um, you know, milk is like for me, I I didn't really handle milk uh, very well at first, and I I trained myself to get back onto milk slowly by adding it in well at first I just drank it and that was a mistake but I, I need, <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I learned that you want to add it back in slowly anything that you've taken out of your diet for a long time uh, needs to be when you're bringing it back in needs to be added in in small amounts just so your body can build up uh, the enzymes to be able to digest it again because you just haven't been eating it so once I was able to do that and um I was able to handle it again, and it's just, like, become, like, m the best thing for me. I use it all the time to keep my immunity up, to keep my hormones balanced. It's it's in my energy levels. It's something that I use post-workout. Um, but it's it's just because it's got, you know, all those qualities. It, it has um, calcium, it, it high levels of calcium, which are really important. And let's just talk about why why we need a lot of calcium in our diet that way through something that has also good fat and protein in it. One of the other things you could probably add to milk is that it has magnesium, pot uh, potassium, right. psyllium, vitamin A, B, D, and K. Um, <laughs> so, and then it's got sugars that are basically able to help the body uh, with the high protein, of, uh, with the protein. And so it's a, a perfect mix of um, like why you can do it like in a shake. You could do right. um, milk with honey and um, gelatin and you can ba – it's like a, a balanced meal if, if you, uh, you know, wanted to increase um, the protein you added the um, add the gelatin. But, you know, it these, helps um, regulate blood sugar tools. basically. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And – one of the things about parathyroid uh, increasing the hormone in the uh, parathyroid hormone mm -hmm. is that it's linked to um, increase in high blood pressure. So right. one of the things that dairy does is because it's a more, a more of a perfect food, it balances your blood sugar. It keeps you from increasing your um, blood pressure. One of the reasons why we like to use dairy as a tool to heal the gut and also use it as a um, recovery drink. Um, you can do use like an orange juice with some milk so you can create the um, vitamin C, calcium, and have a little salt or uh, gelatin mixed in with it. And it's a perfect uh, recovery drink after using um, like, like working out or um, your mid-afternoon snack or something that you just feel like you haven't had enough um, 
uh, calorie intake or anything that kind of helps you. Yeah. And like uh-huh. I heard something, I think I listened to the same show and um, they said something about how people are, can be afraid of milk uh, because of the growth hormone factor in it. Right. Um, yeah. They, yeah. The the fact that well that's the um, was it the the R R B it, R B yeah, G H growth hormone yeah yeah right which we totally um, recommend you know getting your local farmer who really believes in not altering his milk you know grass fed is uh, absolutely the best and you know from there it's just learning um, what your um, your farmer uh, believes in right right. So pasteurized milk, um, we talked about, you know, some of the issues of why um, they add vitamin A and D back into the milk production is because when you remove the fat, you create an issue with the loss of those vitamins. And so, uh, you know, one of the things about supplementing vitamin A and D is it doesn't really, um, it, it, it doesn't really work for your body as well as direct vitamin D production and vitamin soluble vitamins is that correct yeah yeah okay and so you you know um want to get you know your best sources for vitamin a or your lip is from liver um and you you know so these things are um certain reasons why people don't digest very well some actually are afraid of the fat you know because it's a high you know we've been scared into believing fat is bad um which fats are, you know, we just had that topic show are good or bad. Um, but one of the things I think I keep coming back to with people is that, you know, I think in this, in the beginning of the show, you asked, why do people give it up? And, um, I think a couple of reasons is first, you know, they show they're, they're not doing well on it, right? They, right. they end up having some kind of gastro issue. Um, and then through the um, sources of the internet and, and information that milk wasn't made for us to drink and right. that we're stealing the milk from the cow's calf. And then from there, it medical field has actually created, you know, an issue where they said calcium um, was creating uh, issues with uh, too much calcium can cause problems with the heart, right. which is really uh, by, a byproduct of selling supplementation and uh, drugs because <clears throat> the real studies are showing that you need the calcium to keep cramps from coming, um, muscle cramping. Um, the calcium also affects your magnesium absorption. If you're not ingesting enough and it's telling from your body, your body then tells your body that you, that you need more. And so then it takes from the magnesium. So you can't relax your muscles. It's about the displacement of calcium, basically, that people don't understand. It's not about having too much. It's just about the calcium not going where it needs to be and getting displaced. But also I wanted to to point out with what, uh, as you were saying that, it made me think of the soy industry and how that's played a part in making uh, milk or demonizing milk in, in, or getting people off drinking milk. Um mm-hmm you know, in, in the health industry, because, you know, the soy, soy milk has replaced, um, dairy in a lot of ways as a, as a health food, Mm -hmm. um, and become like the new, it's not actually technically dairy, but it, it acts like it is, you know, so does almond milk and, and those kinds of things. It appealed to the masses because the masses that were having problems digesting milk because of their, cortisol driven lifestyles or their low metabolizing body, you know, uh, body because their thyroid has slowed down, um, suited the, 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 okay, this is, this is the reason why I need to drink almond milk. This is the reason why I need to drink soy milk. And then they, you know, made a big case of it that soy was good through like other diets like the Japanese, but then no one really took into effect until years later that there's soy in, percentage in their diet is lower than what we drink because we as Americans yeah. have always multiplied whatever we find and try yeah. to you know drink they're not tons eating, they're of not it. eating it that way either they're not eating right they're not drinking it you know well we've actually now I hear I hear that we have converted a lot of them and which is a bad bad thing because oh, you know yeah you know and, and, and that's, you know, that's one of the things like people don't have the, the studies or the understanding of what happens 
and why you had to quit dairy in the first place, but you can go back to it. And dairy is a good whole food that really, really helps your metabolism. Yeah. And it can be really, really helpful for hormonal balance, especially for women. Don't you think like it's, been, Oh yeah. Oh my God. I, I, I think if more women knew about how helpful dairy can be for like really, um, slowing your aging process down, which I mean, I know a lot of people say, Oh, that's not, I don't know. I, I don't know how important that is to people. It's important to me. But, um, and, and when I think of aging, I don't just think of like how you look or, or your wrinkles and that kind of thing, although that's a big part of it. But the other part of aging is like being able to function really well, like not having arthritis, not having painful joints, you know, mm -hmm. um, and having like a healthy back and those kinds of things. So, um, for me, like that's so important, I think. Um, yeah. I totally agree. And, and estrogen is one of the things that causes a lot of stress. And women, as we get older, start to um, have more gut issues because of the estrogen increases in their tissues. Right. And if they're not getting the, the estrogen out of the gut through um, parasolis and it's doing, you know, like the raw carrot we've talked about, then you're just recycling it back. And, and then you're creating that whole issue of estrogen in the tissues versus being processed out as you cycle through your menses and stuff. So right. perimenopause may start early. Women create menopausal symptoms and, you know, it, it just then makes it easier for people to say, well, dairy is bad for you. Yeah. And, and it has, um, again, like I said earlier, it has progesterone qualities to it, which is really important for women for offsetting the estrogen as they get older. Like we talked about in uh, estrogen misconceptions in one of our earlier shows about estrogen. It's, it's actually a myth that estrogen decreases as women get older. It actually increases because you don't have the progesterone to offset that. So therefore, any foods that you can have in your diet and include in your diet that can offset that estrogen in the body for women is going to be really crucial and really important for balancing the hormones and feeling young and, and energetic, you know. So um, that's why I think it's just so easy. You know, if you can drink milk and if you can do cheese and those kinds of things, then do it. Don't cut it out mm. of your diet. It's so important. I agree with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> it's had a big impact on my life for sure and my diet so um, that's why I wanted to have this show everybody so thank you guys for listening um, if you guys have any more questions about dairy or if there's anything you guys want us to talk about as in regard to dairy definitely comment below let us know what you're thinking you can also comment um, on the show notes page we are happy to answer your questions we may even have a show with question with a, a q a show coming up uh, in the next month or two so definitely if you want one of your questions to be on the next show go ahead and write it down and we'll answer it on the next show so uh maya do you have anything else to add today no i just uh, i got my milk i hope you got yours <laughs> i do it's downstairs actually i just <laughs> ate some cottage cheese um, no no but uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, I think it's going to be a really good year. 2018 is going to be it's going to be a really expansive year. And um, I want to thank everybody for listening to our show. We just basically it hasn't even technically been a year since we launched this podcast, but it has been better than I could have ever expected it to be. And I'm so glad Maya has done this show with me. We're doing it together. And um, I can't wait for this year. Can't wait to see what what we do next and what's to come. So, yeah, exciting. Thanks, Maya. Thanks, Allison. I appreciate it, too. Well, if you guys want to find us on Facebook, you can. Uh, we have actually a new Facebook page, the Integrate Yourself podcast page. And we're going to be doing a private group. We're going to be creating a private uh, Integrate Yourself group at some point this year, too. But we also have uh, the Integrate Yourself podcast community group. You can also join that. And that's a great way to uh, create some dialogue with us and uh, ask questions there, too. 
I want to say, I want to put a plug uh, in for Maya and her new website. It's pretty awesome. So go check that out. <laughs> MayaGollip.com. Uh, Still under you, construction or change, but uh, I'm, I'm starting to like it a little bit more. So I appreciate yeah. that. Thanks. Building a website <laughs> is always uh, interesting. It's kind of fun to create it, but it's a, it's a lot of work. And if you want to check and if you want to connect with me, I'm at PureEnergyPDX.com. Uh, thank you guys again. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. All right. See ya. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening today. Head on over to pureenergypdx.com to access show notes and to become a member of Thrive Market today. Go take advantage of uh, your first order being 25% off as well as free shipping. And not to mention you get another 25 to 50% off the normal retail price of whatever product you're buying. Um, so if you're really spending a lot of money at the grocery store on high end products, I would highly recommend checking this out. It has been so great for us. So I hope you feel the same.